how's it going guys i'm gonna have to do a little voiceover on this part of the video just because there was a bunch of things going on in the shop at the time that i took this video um, but what we have here is a 2003 right stander uh, fixed deck uh, 23 horsepower kawasaki motor that i purchased on facebook marketplace and the guy said that it needed a motor uh, the reasons that he told me it needed a motor didn't make sense to me. But he did mention uh, something about one of the cylinders being low in compression, uh, you know, so so forth and so on. So I pretty much thought that <clears throat> this would be a uh, rebuild on a Kawasaki motor or replacement or what. Um, I bought this machine uh, with the thought of needing a motor or rebuilding a motor. So uh, I did buy it cheap. I paid $800 for it. Uh, it's got 1,900 hours on it in the end. Uh, well, you know, I'm not going to ruin the video. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let it play out, and we'll go through the process of uh, diagnosing it and uh, seeing where we're going to go with it and what we're going to do with it. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it was told that it needs a motor, and everything else is pretty much in good, good working order, which uh, appears to be by looking at it and... Uh, again, I think $800 needing a motor was a certainly a fair price worth repowering it, and uh, here we go. I'm going to start off by removing the air cleaner, getting this out of the way so we can kind of get a good look at uh, what's going on in the carburetor. Alright, here I'm working on the battery connections. They were just a little bit loose. I went and tightened them up and in a bit I'm going to hook up the battery charger to it as well. Next up we're going to pull the spark plugs. Let's go ahead and do a compression test and see what we're looking at here. I did get some pretty low readings. I think I got about 90 or 100 in one cylinder, and I think it was 60 or 70 in the other. Uh, but the cylinders were also, you know, full of fuel from people trying to start it and run it and whatnot. So um, it does have compression. I was originally thinking that maybe we would have a bent valve. I know that uh, one of the common issues with these is the valve, uh, the valve stem can move inside the head and prevent the valve from closing all the way thought that might be the issue and it ends up bending a push rod and then would have no compression but we do have compression uh, so uh, next step I end up putting some starting fluid in it and uh, trying to start it up So my starter fluid can was kind of running out. I was trying to keep it running uh, for a little bit anyways, just so I could listen to the motor and kind of get a good indication of its condition or whether it's you know running smooth or what the issue was. And uh, to me, it sounded pretty damn good. So uh, I continued on into exploring what else could be going on here and looking at the fuel system and whatnot and uh, trying to figure out what exactly is the deal with this machine.
at this point I'm realizing the bottom of the gas tank is leaking and it turns out to be just the rubber grommet that uh, pops into the bottom of the fuel tank that the hose connects to which I now have on order uh, but the remainder of this video I end up using a makeshift uh, way to get some fuel in the carburetor. Was turning it over here just to see if the fuel was going into the fuel filter or if it wasn't and it was not. There ain't nothing wrong with that motor. Now I'm just draining all the rest of the fuel out of the tank so it doesn't keep dripping onto the floor. And we're gonna pull the fuel tank off so I can investigate what the leak is, which again, turns out to be just the grommet on the bottom of the tank. Glad it wasn't a crack in the tank. So at this point, I've realized that there is a hose missing going to the fuel pump here. Uh, it's in the back, and it's actually the pulse hose or pulse line from the crankcase that makes the actual fuel pump pump fuel from the tank down into the carburetor. Uh, so what I end up doing here is looking around and making sure it wasn't you know falling somewhere inside the mower. I did notice a lot of loose screws and whatnot. Somebody has definitely taken it apart and was playing around with this, trying to get it running. I'm not sure what exactly what was done. I'll probably never figure it out. Uh, but at this point, my, my whole idea is to get it running and get it to stay running. So I end up making a hose that connects uh, that fuel pump to the uh, pulse output from the uh, crankcase and uh, see if we can get it to pump fuel and stay running. This is the hose from the bottom of the tank and you can see where the grommet split right there. So that needs replacing.
here I'm realizing that the choke cable and the throttle cable were connected to the same linkage and they were basically working against themselves. Uh, when one of them was supposed to be connected, the choke should be connected to the top and then one of the two holes in the bottom should be the throttle. Uh, mess around with it a little bit to get it adjusted right, but whoever threw this thing back together or tried to make it run or whatever they did, uh, no wonder they couldn't get it running properly. Everything was pretty much hooked up wrong. So figuring it out here and uh, I get it working just the way it's supposed to. Place that rubber seal on the gas tank. Goes in the bottom right here that's leaking. Put a battery in it and she's ready to mount. Can't beat that. Had a feeling. Alright, I realize this is probably a good time to do my 2022 mowing setup video. I seem to do one every year, as do most people. For the last two years, I've done that. Uh, both, both of the last two years, I had a 12-foot trailer. I have since went with a 14-foot dual-axle 7,000 GVW trailer. Uh, the reason being is I want to be able to move this around so pick this up repainted it I've got a couple of videos on it uh, this is the most recent I lettered up the back window let it up the arms finally got the black cat logo uh, from the green one that I put on and uh, yeah it's ready to go cleaned up I cleaned up the inside here repainted some of the stuff in there got it looking really really good so but anyways, the video is not about this. The video is about the mowing setup and the right stander that I just picked up, uh, which was in the last video or in this video, most likely. I'll probably just combine the two. Uh, <clears throat> but anyways, yeah, so 14-foot, uh, 7,000 GVW. I bought this attractor supply company uh, this season. I just got it about a month ago. There's a video on that. I also... Uh, put some Thompson water treatment down on the deck, although you can't really tell now, but it is protected, which is good. 
uh, running all green touch racks. These are the same racks that I had on my last trailer. Got the two and a half inch or two and a half gallon uh, rack here for the gas can. I got the five gallon uh, here. Got the uh, backpack blower rack right here. Put it on the corner. Uh, I did cut the bar out of the front of the trailer to allow me to use these ramps to back the walker up into the back of the dump truck to unload the walker. Um, so I'm right now storing the ramps in the front and just, uh, uh, what is it, ratchet strapping them nice and tight on the front of the trailer uh, for now. There's plenty of places I could put them. I could put them in the back of the truck or whatever, but uh, it's nice to have that on there now because it kind of acts as a front to prevent anything from coming off the edge. So. So that's nice. I actually might uh, make some type of little slot system or something that I can put these in, or maybe we'll put a couple of bars up here with some pins or something to lock the lock them in if I'm gonna stay using those. So back to the uh, racks. We got the green touch here, uh, just your typical uh, hand tool rack, the one, two, three, four, five, six place hand tool rack, and then over on the side here, more green touch. We got the three place trimmer rack. Right now, I'm just getting the season started, so I've only got out the uh, the still FS70R. Um, I go back and forth with all different types of trimmers. I'm going to pick up another one soon. I might get another one of these just to match for now. Pretty happy with it. Uh, it's the first time I ran the still in a while uh, since the olden days. So, And I got an edger that goes on here, and then I'm going to have a secondary trimmer. Got the, uh, what is this, the Extreme Series. This is also Green Touch uh, trimmer string holder. I've just bolted it right to the back of the rack, uh, which was a nice place for it. And it's right here near the trimmer head, which is a good thing. Uh, and this year I am going to run uh, two mowers. I'm going to try to get away from bagging some of the accounts that I have, from bagging everything to bagging some. Uh, I just picked this machine up, which is in the uh, beginning of this video. As kind of a uh, well it was cheap for one thing and it's kind of an experiment I was considering getting a 36 inch uh, stander uh, which is what I was looking for when I found this one uh, for gated backyards to have in addition to this but not to you know replace the parts that that mows uh, but I found this it was such a good deal I couldn't pass it up and uh, the reason we've got this bottle here is I still got a put the uh, rubber uh, grommet that goes in the bottom of the tank. I got it on order. It's going to be here tomorrow just to stop that because the uh, one that came with was leaking. And then I need to replace uh, the battery. It came with a bad battery, so I just have a jump pack connected on here right now just to start it up and move it around. So, so tomorrow I'm going to throw a new battery in it, and when that uh, grommet comes in, I'm going to toss that in and hook up the, the regular fuel supply, and this mower is ready to go. I just went through it, adjusted the valve clearances, uh change the oil and i sharpen the blades so this is ready to go uh, it does need some casters in the front uh, or the uh, bushings in the front casters i'm going to order those up as well but it's ready to mow as it is so i'm uh, going to try the two mower setup uh just solo operator i am going to start cutting some of the yards that i can get away with not catching with this take some of the hours off the walker and also you can mow faster when you're not catching grass so uh, this should be a good addition to the lawn crew. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to be running for the spring. We'll see how it goes, and I'll keep you updated. Uh, if anything changes, I, I might move things around the trailer. I might have the walker on the back. If this is something that I'm going to keep, I may consider doing a side gate up in the front uh, so I could unload either mower uh, without having to move the other. We'll see how that goes. Again, kind of an experiment. Worst case scenario, I fix it. I already fixed it, um, finished fixing it, and I'm just gonna sell that mower for a, a profit. Like I said, I got such a good deal on it. Couldn't pass it up, so uh, that's where we're at on that. So yeah, there's my uh, 2022 spring setup. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.